back when I did the um, the Gorton eight and a half D tour, the first one, I forgot to mention a couple things, and I wanted to go back and run back through them. Uh, first one is this. Let's. Uh, the um, <laughs> what the heck is this thing called? Uh, the uh, draw bar, uh, the draw bar itself, and then the spindle. Um, of course, you can lock the machine, and then this is like a three-quarter um, draw bar square on the end, and it sits in this in this little. Um, let's, let's focus. It sits in this little um, uh, coupling that, well, it would unscrew, but I can't do it by hand. Um, but it actually captures the draw bar. So if you were to turn it and loosen it with a an end mill in a collet uh, in the spindle tight, uh, what would happen is um, instead of you know on a normal arrangement where the draw bar would actually just completely you could completely take the draw bar out of the machine and the end mill and collet are still sitting in the spindle and uh, this actually uh, you, you would unscrew it until it hits the this uh, the spacer here uh, which has a shoulder to capture the draw bar and then it forces down forces out the collet and, and whatever you got in there which is nice because you don't have to beat on it with a hammer which is very bad for the spindle bearings in this machine and uh, yeah, if you have to do that, if you have to ever beat on the um, on the draw bar, just stop and and think. Um, there are ways to to get stuck stuff out of there, and uh, before you start beating, it would actually be better just to uh, you know put a boring bar on a vise or something like that, and actually uh, bore out whatever is in the spindle end if it's possible. Uh, if not, you know, you could always, um, I don't know if this would be advisable, but, you know, before I just start beating on it, I would, I would block the, uh, um, the, the spindle end against the table, well, with, with, uh, with something, um, preferably, a, I guess, a chunk of metal, um, and uh, so that you know the bearings wouldn't be taking all of the force they would still be taking some force I think even with something like that um, yeah so I got uh, I got oil all over my camera now <laughs> anyways I think that's I think that's about all oh there's one more thing I don't think I mentioned this that um, you can see right here um, I'm not exactly sure what this oils. Uh, I'm assuming that it's one of the the bearings. You know, I, I don't know. I know there's like four bearings in here. I think so. I'm not sure which one specifically uh, this oils, but I don't have anything in there. Um, and I've seen that it's this wick type, I believe, um, in on other machines. I'm assuming. I I I'm, I've seen gets oil cups with a, like a fiber wick um, and that's I, what I'm guessing is supposed to be in here and I'm guessing that it through osmosis it feeds oil uh, I but I don't really know because if you just if I just fill this with oil to the top uh, it'll just run right through the spindle and run right out onto the table very very quickly um, so I do that um, occasionally as I'm running it because I don't have the proper oil cup in there um, yeah, so that's one other thing that it's missing. Um, also the, the belt cover, which is, which is down here. Yeah, thanks for watching.